But we have come to a point where we'll be listening to God's word. And I want to plead with you to give God's word the hearing. We have said all. We have done all. Let's hear what God has in store for us. We have a guest speaker in our midst. Some of you will remember the first Sunday in May, Pastor Tlo preached to us. Just in case we forgot, Muruti, if you can wave to the church. Just stand and wave so that they can remember you. There he is. But today it's his wife, Pastor Anga, who's going to give us the word of God. They are both pastoring a church just outside Polokwani, actually outside Sesheho, in a village called Mahibizwani. It's a fast-growing church that has given birth to many branches in those villages. They are blessed with three kids, two boys and a girl. Hey, but above all, I love her passion for the things of God. Please help me welcome her as she comes to minister God's word. Amen. Go for it, baby. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, I greet you all, Basalwani, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. It is an honor for me to be standing um, in front of you again uh, this morning. I don't take it lightly. It's a beautiful opportunity every time God, you know, gives you the grace to speak and to declare his word. Hallelujah. So then I'm going to ask and I'm going to thank uh, Pastor Elijah and Pastor Eunice and the leadership of the church for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Hallelujah. So today it's Father's Day. Amen. And my topic is God, our Father. Hallelujah. We have a Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Who loves us very much. So when um, in the book of Genesis, we are told how God had given Adam and Eve an instruction and how they um, disobeyed that instruction. And as a result of that disobedience, there was a separation that occurred between man and God. Now, it has always been God's intended purpose for him to dwell in the heart of men. When he says that I do not seek a temple that is made out of our hands, he means the temple that he seeks is us. Hallelujah. So then he had a plan and the plan was Jesus, that Jesus would come and die for us so that that re restoration can, you know, can be established between us and God. So when Jesus came, he then came to do away with that separation. Hallelujah. So then it is easy for us to say that when Jesus came, he came to introduce us to God, our Father. He came to reconcile us back to him. He came to reconcile us back to the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Amen. So when he died, we are then told that in the book of John, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a story there on resurrection. We are then told that in the morning, Mary went very in the morning to the tomb. When she got there, she saw that the stone had been moved. We are then told that Mary then went to call Peter and John to tell them of what just happened. That I can't see the, the body of the master. Peter and John ran to the tomb to see the very same thing. They then left and went home. We are then told that Mary then decided to wait outside of the tomb. The Bible says she was weeping at that time. As she was weeping, she saw two angels. One of them standing at the head of where they had put the body of Jesus. And then the other one at the feet. The angels then asked her, why are you crying? What is the matter? 
Mary responds and Mary says that they have taken my master and I do not know where they have put him. She continues crying. She turns. As she turns, she sees Jesus. Jesus then says, woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? The Bible tells us that Mary thought at that time that Jesus was a gardener. So Mary then says, if you have taken him, tell me where you have put him so that I can go and find him. The Bible tells us that Jesus then says, Mary, at that very time, Mary understood that I am no longer talking to a gardener. I am speaking to my master. She responds and says, Raponi, which means master or teacher. The Bible tells us that she was so excited to see Jesus that she wanted to embrace him. John 20, 17. Then Jesus says, do not touch me because I have not ascended to my father. He then says, but go tell my brethren. There's a change there. There's a change in standing there. That now Jesus to me is not just a teacher. He is also my brother. He does not say, go and tell the disciples. No, he could have said that. But there was something he wanted us to see. That me and you are one. We respond to the same family of God. That when God looks at me as Jesus and says he is pleased, when he comes and looks at you, he is pleased. Because now we are in the household of God. He then says, go and tell them, that I am ascending to my father and your father to my God and your God. Child of God, you belong. You belong. Never allow any circumstance never allow anything to tell you otherwise you belong we are not strangers and foreigners to god anymore we are one with him he has found pleasure in making us his home. So you are not an orphan. You are not an orphan. So in Romans chapter 8 verse 14 to 17. It says there. For as many as are led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God. Does Jesus, does the Holy Spirit dwell in you? Does he dwell in you? He does. You're born again, right? Some of us are born again here and there. If we are born again, the Spirit of God dwells in us. And if the Spirit of God dwells in us, he leads us. And because he leads us, we are sons of God. This is a statement of fact. It is not a, I'm not sure. Whether I'm a son of God or not, no. It's a statement of fact that you and I are sons in the kingdom. 
But you, it says, for you did not receive, this is verse 15, the spirit of bondage again to fear. You and I, if we are in God, which we are, we have not received a spirit of fear. Fear that makes a coward out of a person. When Peter was confronted with those little girls who were saying to him, I, I know you. I've seen you with him. And Peter said, no, I don't know Jesus. I've never been with him. I don't know him. The Bible says he denied him three times because he was afraid. When his eyes met with the master and he saw Jesus, he did not turn and say, no, I lied. I knew Jesus. No, fear kept him bound. But today, you and I don't have that fear. After resurrection, the same Peter who was afraid, at once, 5,000 got born again. We have something great. We have something great. Hallelujah. It says, the spirit of adoption by whom? But we or you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. That is the spirit we have. The spirit of placement as sons. That is adoption. The spirit of placement as sons. Something that we did not deserve. We could not have earned it. Even if we wanted to. It is God's grace. In Colossians he says. Giving thanks to the father. Who has qualified us. He qualified us. All we have to do. Is believe. All we have to do is yield to this truth that we have a father. When the children of Israel were being bitten by snakes and God says to Moses, make a snake out of brass and put it there or on a pole. Whoever looks at it will be healed. He did that. He just took something, made a snake out of brass, put a pole. If ever the children of Israelites were bitten by the snake, all they need to do was to look and live. All they needed to do was to look and live. So today, we are looking and we are living. We are walking in the confidence of knowing that God is our Father. What made Jesus to do exploits is because he had an awareness that God was his Father. To Lazarus he says, Father, I thank you at Lazarus' tomb. Father, I thank you that you hear me and you hear me always. We have a hearing with God. We have a hearing with God. When he prays, I said that Jesus came to introduce us to the Father. He came to introduce us to God as Father. When he prays in Matthew 6, he says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Meaning, your influence in the hearts of men come. Your will be done as it is in heaven. And then he makes a statement of fact again. He says, you give us this day. It's not something he's going to make. It's not something he's going to do. He says, you give us this day our daily bread you forgive our sins even as we forgive those who sin against us that is the father that we have 
Psalm 103, verse 1. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. What are the benefits? The benefits are the doings of God. The, it's what your father does. It's what your father does. Your father forgives your sins. That's what he does. Your father heals your diseases. Your father restores you from destruction. And so when we walk in this confidence, we will do great exploits. When we allow this truth to shine so brightly through us, this world that we live in will never be the same. Because Jesus says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. There is nothing that you can do that can ever make your father love you more than he does now. Or love you less than, than he does now. There's nothing you can do. It's authenticated. It's authenticated. So even in this Father's Day, let's go with that knowledge. That I am not alone. I am not alone. My Father loves me. I don't have to end it. This past week, on Thursday, on June 16, I had the privilege of going to watch my son play soccer. There were eight, it was a tournament, eight matches. In the eight matches, he only played one. And halftime. And he had called all of us to come and watch him. He called the dad, all of us who were there, geared, it was cold, geared to watch him play soccer. He only played one for about 15 minutes. And you could see that he's gutted. We were there from 8 o'clock. We left at 4 o'clock. He was gutted. Gutted. Yo, it was bad. So as the other boys are playing, playing and they're so good. They are the sellers of the team. The fathers, they come and they're like, why are you not doing this? Touch and go, touch and go. You called us to come here and, 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 and watch you play. What are you doing? If you don't score a goal, now I'm leaving. I'm serious. I remember looking at that and thinking, okay, oh, these people are taking this thing very serious. Eh? Taking very serious. Okay, we leave, we get into the car. So, all that pent up emotion that my son had from the last time he played up until four o'clock when he got into the car there was a release he cried and i mean he cried and i remember we were trying to counsel him and there was nothing that we could say that was easing the pain at that moment and I remember I said to my husband, you know what? Let's let him cry. When he's done, we'll talk to him. Yeah, true. After a few minutes, he's done. My husband, he opens his mouth and he says, Borona, I'm proud of you. With tears in his eyes, he says, but why? I did not do anything. I did not play anything. And my husband says, I'm proud of you because you are. And I'm proud of you because you, you did not give up. So what am I trying to say? If an earthly father has the wisdom to say, even if you've not done anything, I'm proud of you. Your father does better than that.
that's better than that. That's better than that. That even when you don't feel like it, he says, I'm happy that I live in you. Um, when you wake up in the morning, he says, I'm pleased. Before you even utter a word, he says, you are loved. He says, you belong. He says, there is a purpose. He says, the nations will see exploits because of you. Because you are loved. So, child of God, we have a mandate. I get it, we said we are sons in the kingdom. Sons are heirs. And sons are responsible. We have a responsibility to take what we know, to take what we have to the ends of the world. We have the responsibility to fill stadiums for Jesus. We have a responsibility to fill halls for Jesus. And we are going to do it because God is pleased with us. And God wants each and every one of us to take out that which is in us for this generation. So the reason why we said we should do God our Father is so that when you see how God sees you, you can be like that woman in the well and say, come, come and see, come and see. The one who tells me the things that I've done and evangelize, that is our mandate. That is why we live. That is why we are here to make the gospel known, to make God our Father known to the ends of the world. Thank you, Mundis. Hallelujah. Let's stand on our feet, please. Maybe we can do better than that. Let's thank God for this powerful word, timely word that we got today. Germany are going to just sing a song and let's commit ourselves. Let's commit our ways to God, our Father. Who am I that the highest King would welcome me? I was lost, but He brought me in His love for me. Yes, His love for me. Oh, the sun set free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my father's house, there's a place. For me, I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Who the sun set free? The sun set free. So it's free. I'm a child of God. Forsaken, I am weak.
glorify your holy name, O oh God. For there is none like you. As we have our eyes closed, we sense the presence of God the Father in the house. You are following us, Facebook or YouTube. I believe where you are, the presence of the Father is manifested. We thank God for what He did for us through Jesus. The maid servant said to us, the resurrection of Jesus made a difference. We are no longer the same. For Jesus died for us and He rose from the dead. And Jesus says to Mary, I am going do not touch me I am going to my father and your father I'm going to my God and your God thank God that he is our father thank God that when the prodigal son came to his father when he came to his senses his father ran and embraced him it doesn't matter what you did what you failed to do he is still your loving father he's still our heavenly father and today we go back to him we celebrate who he is and what he has done for us if you're here today physically or you're following us online we want to pray for you today he is still a loving father. Maybe you're here today and you say, I want to make things right with God. And you say, I'm inviting God in my life. We want to tell you that Jesus is still a savior today. He's still a redeemer today. He's still a healer today. If you're here today, and you say, God, I need you. I need your intervention in my life. You are the right place at the right time. We're not talking about religion. We're talking about the encounter with the risen Jesus. Therefore, I'm going to pray for you today. But if you're here and say, Pastor, this is me. I need prayer. I need Jesus. I need God in my life. Just raise your hand where you are and we are going to pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. Are you here today? Yes. Thank you, my brother. I see that hand. Is there any other person in the balcony? Are you there? And say, yes, thank you, my sister. I see that hand on my left hand side. Is there any other person who prepared to wait for you? I need Jesus today. I need him. I need God. He's a loving father. Yes. Thank you. Thank you that you are not afraid and you just raised your hands. Not to me, but to God. And God sees beyond the physical. He sees deep down in your heart. Therefore, let's pray and embrace those who accepted him even though he's online and we are going to do like this i'm going to say words just follow me and we believe that something is happening in their lives say these words after me lord jesus i come to you just as i am i cannot save myself but today i come to you forgive me of my sin forgive me of my past and my failures i believe today you have spoken into my life i believe i'm saved i believe i'm a child of god i believe my name is written in the lamb's book of life in jesus name i say in jesus name we have prayed hallelujah glory to god Thank you, Jesus. 
those who raise their hands god richly bless you um there will be a table on the foyer and i believe pastor magaya will be there with you he will talk to you hey thank you very much pastor anga thank you for bringing such a powerful word to us and to our attention please let us not leave as orphans but we have a, have a loving heavenly father let us leave as sons now sons has nothing to do with gender it has to do with inheritance praise the name of the lord yes we are generous as cornerstone and when somebody came and ministered to us and we bless them we are going to take a love offering now um john benny and the team are they not wonderful these guys <laughs> we love you guys we love you you bless us you usher us into the presence of god they're going to sing a song and we're going to take a love offering for pastor anga visited us for the first time today pastor priscilla has already welcomed you and she indicated that at the end of the service please go through that door there's an ashim who has a placket uh, that says visitor welcome home um please just go through that door for a very few moments um our hospi hospitality team are going to talk to you Please, thank you very much uh, for coming once more. Are you aware that we are going back to pre-COVID? Are you aware we are going there? And I believe God is taking us there. Right? Let's do the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen and amen okay thank you before we leave please before we leave i am sorry i forgot right brother rulani elder rulani is uh, the men's ministry leader so he wishes to meet all the men on the left hand side of the auditorium please for a very short time brother rulani and his team are going to talk to you as we sing sorry 
Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So please, the men, let's just congregate this side as the others are released.